With the upcoming launch of the new 3960 and 3970X Zen 2 Threadripper processors, AMD have decided to go with a new platform. So X399 with the launch of these new Zen 2 chips is going to be obsolete in that if you, even if you get a BIOS update for these motherboards, these new Zen 2 Threadripper processors will simply not work. And it's pretty funny because these two motherboards share the same socket size and they also share the same amount of pins but apparently on trx40 the pins have been wired in a different configuration so even though you put your 2950x in the trx40 or you put the 3970x in the x399 motherboard things won't go bad if you try to boot it up it just won't boot up so i'm told there's no dangerous configurations in how they've changed it but that does leave the question of why would AMD want to make an entirely new platform? I do have some speculations on exactly why because I'm pretty much guessing in the dark because I have been told a few different reasons, but I'll give it to you guys a bit later. What we're gonna do is unbox both these motherboards and then quickly go through the differences besides the different socket pin configuration as to X399 versus the new TRX40 platform. Today's video isn't sponsored, however, there is this cool contraption that I bought off eBay for only a couple of dollars, which is now curing my hunchback. And if you're anything like me and you aspire to be a healthy hermit, then one of these braces can really go a long way to straighten out that 90 degree bend that you've suffered from PCs. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech yes City, and we've got the two motherboards here side by side, and this TRX40 chipset is ready to go for the upcoming review. It's codenamed, I think, STRX4, as opposed to this, which is TR4, and then it's known as X399. But what we got here on the CPU side is still quad channel memory support, just like they had on X399, but they've upped it to 3200 megahertz official support, even though they've included a 3600 megahertz CL16 kit of memory. So there is a chance that this could not even work at the XMP speeds. I'll have to check that when I do the review. But we've got 48 lanes of PCIe 4.0 as opposed to 48 lanes on the CPU of PCIe 3.0. Then on the chipset, they've got eight lanes of PCIe 4.0 and then you've got PCIe 3.0. So they've upgraded all those lanes, same amount of lanes, but you've now changed that to PCIe Gen 4. However, there is a little change when it comes to the NVMe side of things where you've got on X399, you had the CPU side supporting a three uh, PCA Gen 4 X4 lanes, and there was none from the chipset itself. But this time around, they've gone with two uh, PCIe 4.0 by fours from the CPU, and then two of those again from the chipset itself. So you do get an extra four lanes for NVMe this time around with uh, TR4X. Now, speaking of USB support on both these platforms here, we'll start off with X399. From the chipset itself, you got support for two a USB 3.1 Gen 2s, five USB uh, 3.1 Gen 1s, and seven USB 2.0. And then on the CPU side, you got support for eight USB 3.1 Gen 1s. And now moving over to TRX40, we now have from the CPU side of things, four USB 3.2 Gen 2 and four USB 2. So they've taken away uh, four USB 3.1s, converted them to USB 2, and then gave an additional upgrade on the previous 3.1 Gen 1. And now moving over to the chipset side of things on TRX40, you now have support for eight USB uh, Gen 2 3.2 ports, as well as an additional eight USB 2.0. There's also a chipset link that has been upgraded where you had a PCIe 3.0 X4, you've now got the ability to have PCIe Gen 4 X8. So they've pretty much quadrupled the amount of bandwidth going through the chipset link. And then the HD audio was going from the CPU as opposed on TRX40. Now it's going uh, via the chipset instead of the CPU. So there's the main things that they've changed around with the socket, most likely for efficiency this time around. However, I will state again, X399 won't work with the new Zen 2 CPUs. And of course the Zen Plus and the original Zen Threadrippers won't work on the TRX40 chipset. And so we're gonna quickly sit down now and just ease out my hunchback while I talk to you guys about why I think AMD's gone with a new socket this time. And I've asked around and I got met with some of the answers like they had to and stuff like that, but it didn't make any sense when the CPU is pretty much fitting into the exact same socket and pin layout. 
And then that got me thinking, why exactly would AMD uh, make a new chipset and then essentially do what Intel's doing and force people to update to that new chipset? Because I know these X399 motherboards, a lot of people who bought them paid a lot of money for some of those motherboards. So it is a little bit disappointing to see that you can't use the new Zen 2 CPUs on the old X399 motherboards because let's face it, a lot of people out there probably aren't gonna be utilizing PCIe Gen 4.0 as opposed to them being able to utilize those new Zen 2 cores and threads, which as we've seen with Zen 2, the actual uh, mainstream lineup, that's providing some big increases over Zen Plus. And so my guess is, and being straight with you guys, is I think the reason they've forced this new chipset is simply the BIOS backdate and updates and the potential for problems and headaches where someone goes out and buys an X399 motherboard and even though they pretty much all support flashback on X399, the problem is, is that the BIOS manufacturers may have a hard time keeping up with compatibility. And so AMD on their HEDT platform do not want any problems whatsoever. They want a really good experience to come out from the get-go and compete with Intel. We've already seen with B350, X370, B450, the amount of sheer BIOS updates that motherboard manufacturers have had to push out in order to get the Zen 2 CPUs to work properly. And even then, they've had compatibility issues and there've been wide reports of things just not working properly. And so I think the sheer amount of BIOS updates that would be needed, and even then the potential for problems if they allowed Zen 2 Threadripper to work on X399, wouldn't be worth it for the potential that it could cause to AMD's public image on the high-end desktop platform. And now, of course, in the history of mainstream and BIOS updates, that's generally to be expected, but when someone's pitching out a lot of money in this tune of maybe $3,000 plus for a whole uh, TRX40 setup, they want people to have a seamless experience and they know they need to get that right. So the best way to address that is just to stop people from buying X399 motherboards and then getting a Zen 2 CPU and having problems because if that happens, then they know for a fact those people are gonna return that stuff and then go out and buy an Intel solution with X299. So with that out of the way, do let us know in the comments section below what you think of the new TRX40 chipset being released and also about the uh, new Zen 2 Threadripper chips not being able to work on the X399 motherboards. I thought those motherboards were a significant investment and the ironic thing is, is that a cheap A320 board supports the new uh, Zen 2 processors on the mainstream. So I was a little bit disappointed with that. I think AMD would have really scored some big points if they allowed the 32 core 3970X to work even on something like the Tai Chi that we've got here where I'm seeing with this Zenith board that I've got in with the TRX40 chipset, it's massive. And I definitely think there is going to be a 64 core released because this motherboard definitely has the juice to support up to 64 cores. We're already seeing with the 32 core, that's gonna be a lot more power efficient than the 2990WX ever was. And so that could have worked. Definitely the 32 core solutions uh, coming out with Threadripper could have worked on a lot of X399 motherboards, I feel, in terms of VRMs and power consumption and stuff like that. But do let us know what you guys think. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always. And speaking of the thoughts and opinions, we got the question of the day from Spars and he asked, what monitor are you using? And he's referring to the previous video that we did. I'll put the link up here where I didn't actually talk about the monitor a whole lot, but it was very unique, this monitor. I picked it up in a used parts hunt. It's like a Dell monitor with a gloss screen. And the weirdest thing about it is it's got this resolution that I've never seen before, which is like 1152, I think, by 2000 and something. Like if you guys have ever heard of this resolution before, let us know in the comments, but it's just a weird resolution. I was scratching my head. I'm like, what's with the uh, few extra pixels? Was that Dell trying to flex on the other manufacturers out there? Because they do have to get this panel and put it in the monitor and so, there is a panel manufacturer out there that must have been manufacturing these, uh, I guess, 2K panels. That is a proper 2K panel. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and also the new anti-hunchback solution. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And if you stayed this far and you're still watching and you're not subbed already, you may have to hit sub and ring that bell to get the videos the moment they drop, including the upcoming 3970WX review. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.